Hello and welcome to Shorts in Psychology. The aim of this video is to take a close look at Science as a Human Endeavour tasks, which are part of the South Australian SAIS Science Curriculum. The focus of the video and examples used will be in the context of psychology. However, much of the content in this video in terms of pitfalls and strategies for success are relevant to all of the science subjects. If you're not familiar with the Science as a Human Endeavour key concepts, I would suggest watching my Introduction to She video linked in the comments below first. This video is more of a deep dive into She assessment tasks in terms of its requirements, common student pitfalls and exemplars illustrating what success looks like. So let's get started. We'll begin by quickly going over the task requirements. You have flexibility with your format and don't have to default to a standard written report. So choose the format that you feel will enable you to present your best work. This may very well be a written report or news article, but a multimedia format such as an oral or multimedia presentation is fine too. It could even be a recorded interview discussion with your teacher. What's important in being assessed is your content, not the format you are presenting it in. The word limit for written formats is 1000 words for stage one and 1500 for stage two. If multimodal, the time limit is six minutes for stage one and nine minutes for stage two. How your topic is selected may vary depending on your teacher. It may be that you are free to choose your own topic or it may be provided to you. Regardless, it just needs to relate to the safe psychology curriculum. So if you're choosing your own topic, make sure you check it with your teacher. Your task should contain four main components an introduction, some relevant psychological background, an explanation of how your topic illustrates the interaction between science and society, and a conclusion. Let's look a bit more closely at what each of these components should contain. For each section, you'll see a suggested approximate word count that is colour coded for stage one and two. You can see here that the introduction should be fairly brief. You need to explain why the topic is important or relevant and you should link it to the relevant aspect of the SAFE psychology curriculum. For example, if you are completing a SHE task about mirror neurons, it could be linked to their role in observational learning and empathy. You also clearly need to identify what SHE key concepts you'll be discussing. Don't just list these, but rather briefly explain how your topic will show the interaction between science and society. And finally, how will your discussion of the purpose, potential impact or application lead psychology to further understand complex problems and challenges globally in the future. After your introduction, you need to provide an explanation of the psychological concepts involved. This section should be concise as it isn't the main focus of the task. You also need to be selective about what is covered here. It doesn't need to be absolutely every bit of background information. Only describe those aspects that are most relevant so that it's clear what the recent discovery, innovation, issue or advance is. It's also important to make sure this section is coherent. Don't just list facts and figures. Make sure sentences flow on logically from each other. Once you've provided some more general background information, give some more context specific science. What are the scientists looking at doing? How are they doing it? Briefly explain the recent discovery or problem before discussing how it illustrates the interaction between science and society. This brings us to the most important part of the task, your discussion of she concepts. As a result, most of your word count should be dedicated to this, not background information. You need to talk about how the focus of the investigation illustrates she concepts, for example, how has the development of new technologies such as brain imaging techniques increased our psychological understanding of addiction? To ensure you can discuss each she concept in adequate depth, only discuss one or two key concepts. This doesn't mean you have to discuss all of the related elaborations. For example, choosing communication and collaboration doesn't mean you have to discuss communication and collaboration. No matter what she concepts you choose to discuss, make sure you link them to how it is impacting on society. This brings us to the final part of the task, the discussion of impact and conclusion. This can include talking about areas that require further development or identifying interest groups that will be affected by the research. 
There are lots of different types of impact that may be relevant for you to discuss, such as environmental, socio-cultural, health or economic impacts. It's also worth describing the effect the focus area and research will have on quality of life. Now that you have an idea of what you need to cover in the task, let's look at some common pitfalls students make. The first one is that students often provide too much background information and thus their discussion of she concepts is too brief and lacks depth. Another common pitfall is that students choose too many she concepts to discuss and therefore they lack depth because there is so much to cover that the student will end up just listing examples of the different she concepts rather than exploring them in depth and explaining their impact. Which leads to the third and final pitfall we're going to examine which is that often there is no discussion of impact at all, and that once the students discuss she concepts, they conclude by merely repeating points rather than discussing impact. Let's have a closer look at common pitfalls within the she section of the task using some exemplars. A really common mistake is that students will merely list examples of she concepts rather than discussing how or why it illustrates this concept. If we have a look at this exemplar, the student has listed some institutions that have collaborated, but hasn't told us anything about why they collaborated in the first place or what the collaboration involved. How did each institution contribute? What were their areas of expertise, previous research or access to specialist equipment that facilitated this collaboration and made it necessary? Another common mistake, which is easy to make when you've been doing so much research, is to summarise lots of research findings, but not actually discuss how they illustrate the interaction between science and society. Here is a good example. You might like to pause the video for a minute so you can read the exemplar. In a nutshell, this paragraph is a discussion of Panita's research method and results, rather than a discussion of how the research is an example of development. The next common pitfall is overnaming researchers and their institutions. Not only does it make sentences longer and impacts clarity, but it is using up valuable word count. Besides, this is what in-text referencing is for. There's no need to name everybody in the body of the text. Something else to avoid that uses valuable word count is quoting. It is your original work and ideas that are being assessed. Quoting an article doesn't mean you understand it. Instead, summarise in your own words and in-text reference. Here is another good example of overquoting. This student hasn't demonstrated any understanding of the research literature they have read here. They have simply rewritten it. Now that we've looked at some of the common pitfalls in detail, let's look at some examples of success. What does a great she section look like? You may wish to pause each of the next few slides so that you can read the exemplar at your own pace. This student is talking about how the development of functional MRI technology has led to new knowledge about mirror neurons in psychopathy. Rather than just summarising the findings of the study, the student is discussing the role fMRI played in the acquisition of this new knowledge and what this new knowledge was. They then go on to discuss how this information could be used to better society in terms of further research, diagnosis of psychopathy, and the impact of early diagnosis on individuals. Here is an example of collaboration. Rather than just listening names of researchers and institutions, the student explains how each party contributed. For example, musicians were involved in selecting the musical piece that was played to the participants. The student also discusses why these collaborations are important in the research. Here is one final exemplar. Again, the student isn't merely summarising research findings, in this case about the role of mirror neurons in autism. Instead, the student is explaining how knowledge of mirror neurons and autism could be applied to identify children with autism spectrum disorder and how it has been used to develop interventions such as biofeedback. You may be looking at these exemplars and think, but how do I identify examples of she in my own research? How do I avoid just summarising research findings? To help you with this, I'm going to briefly summarise some key questions you can use to help you identify examples of each of the she concepts. Let's start with influence. 
There are two aspects to influence, how society is influencing what is researched and how what is researched is influencing society. When looking for examples of how society is influencing what is researched, ask yourself, what is currently happening in society for psychologists to research about this topic? A perfect example of this type of influence is the many research studies that were conducted examining the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdowns on mental health. We can look at this in both a local, national and global context. Aspects of society that influence research can be economic, sociocultural, religious, political or environmental. Multiple influences may be at play within your focus topic. If we are looking for examples of how what is researched is influencing society, you need to examine the consequences of the research and how it's being monitored and evaluated. How may the research influence public perception? For example, it may reduce stigma towards individuals suffering from a particular disorder. If you have chosen to discuss collaboration, look at who has been contributing to the research. Is it across countries and or institutions? Has anyone else besides psychologists been contributing to the research, such as government bodies, other health professionals or education providers? What is the role of each group in the partnership and why are they required? How has it helped to further their knowledge? When discussing examples of communication, consider why the communication and verification of results is important. How were the results communicated? In what formats? How did it help to further knowledge in this area? If you choose this SHE concept, you don't automatically have to discuss development and application. You can just discuss one of these aspects. When looking for examples of development, look for occasions where developments in technology or theories have changed psychological understanding. What new knowledge was gained or perhaps existing knowledge was refined as a result of these developments? If you're discussing application, look for examples where knowledge of psychology has been applied to better society, such as to develop a new diagnostic tool or modify an existing treatment. How has knowledge of psychology been used to inform public debate and practices? In summary, the discussion of she key concepts should be the majority of your report. Only include relevant psychological background and keep it concise. Don't overquote, summarise research findings in your own words and link examples from research to how it illustrates a specific she concept. You might find this analogy helpful when approaching a she task. Think of it as the science equivalent of an English essay where you are discussing themes in a text. I still remember having to read Romeo and Juliet and write an essay about how love was portrayed in the play. This meant I was not meant to summarise the whole play and describe all of the events in Romeo and Juliet's tragic love story, but rather I had to discuss how the concept of love was portrayed in the play using some specific examples. A she task is the same concept. It is not summarising some background psychological information and research findings. It's discussing how research into the topic illustrates concepts like influence, development and application. I hope this video has helped you understand how to be successful when completing your SHE task and some of the pitfalls to avoid. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Good luck.